Hello, mountain climbers. I'm your host and fellow mountain climber, Whitney. So I am so excited about this episode because I'm doing something I've never done before. As many of you know, Rubyville Community Church, known as RCC, is celebrating its 50th anniversary this year as being a church, which is so exciting. We're thrilled about this milestone. So I got to thinking it would be so cool to hear the history of how this church became a church. Because, you know, even though planning a church is a good thing, it is still a mountain to climb because so many things have to fall in place for it to happen. So, obviously, I wasn't alive yet um, when this church, RCC, became a church, but my Uncle Bob and my mom, Kathy, they were, and they were charter members, and they have such a unique perspective and just thoughts on our history, because mom was in junior high, Uncle Bob was, I think, like in his 20s or 30s, so I invited them to come on Mountain Climbers. Mom is my guest host, and uh, Uncle Bob is going to be sharing, and they're kind of going to have a conversation and just reminisce about the good old days. I know it will bless you because how Rubyville became a church and just what we've, we've stood on for 50 years is nothing short of miraculous. And I know that you're going to be so blessed hearing them speak. So I'm excited. Let's get to it. Thank you, Whitney, for allowing us to do an episode of Mountain Climbers. It might not be as polished or as smooth as you do interviews, but we'll do the best we can. And because it's Rubyville Community Church's 50th anniversary, we dress for the occasion. And we thought this would be a good time to reminisce and look back and see how the Lord allowed Rubyville Community Church to become a congregation through blessing us and directing us and guiding us. And um, in October of 71, it was official. Lots of things led up to that, and we're going to go into that. But we were ble blessed to be there from the beginning. And um, Uncle Bob had the privilege of being a deacon from the beginning. And so we're just very grateful that we can give our perspective. And that's the cool thing about it is everybody that our charter members have a perspective that they remember of how the Lord worked in the situation. But as we think about it, the greatest blessing that the Lord gave us, any of us, is when he saved us. And so I'm going to start out by asking Uncle Bob to share his testimony of how the Lord saved him. Well, I come up <clears throat> after the, the Depression, and everything was pretty rough back then. And my mother and dad were devout Christians. I didn't want any part of that. And at about the age of 12, I made up my mind that I didn't want no part of that. And God allowed me to make that decision. And as far as I know, nobody witnessed to me until I was about 39 years old. And it, <clears throat> anyway, we uh, we moved away and we moved we moved to Menford and we were there ten years and we bought a place and moved back here uh, up the Legion and uh, uh, the kids and Todd and, and Keith and Sue started going to church with Nola and them and uh, they went to church and uh, Keith and and Sue got saved. Well, I still didn't want a part of that. And I, when, the way I grew up, it was 
it was rough. It was it was hard. You had to make it on your own. Uh, I, I know I'm going backwards on this thing now. Mm -hmm. I should have. <laughs> it's okay. That's the other part. But when I I started to work when I was 11 years old in the in the uh, uh, fields fields down uh, the farm down below me there. There's a truck farm. They raise vegetables. And back then things was tough. And I, I went to work for uh, 10 cents an hour, a dollar a day, uh, 10 hours a day. And I had more money in my pocket than dad did. And that money was probably a letdown to me because I started bad habits. I continued the bad habits, and I'm still paying for them. But, uh, <clears throat> anyhow, when we uh, when we moved back and they started going to church, I didn't want any part of that. And I don't know; it was probably a, maybe a a year. So I don't, I don't know just how it was, but uh, I hadn't went to church with them, but I was working swing shift and they was having revival and I finished up on Thursday and didn't have to go back to work till Tuesday morning. And uh, uh, Sue asked me if, if, if to go to church with them and I said, no, I didn't want to go. And then later on, Keith asked me, why didn't I go with him? So I did. And I didn't know what it was then, but I know now I got under conviction. And that was on Thursday night, and the revival was supposed to end on <clears throat> Sunday night. So uh, I, I was miserable, and they didn't have to ask me to go the next night, I went. I couldn't figure out what was going on. I couldn't figure out uh, what was wrong with me. And uh, I, you know, I didn't have any financial problems or anything. And, and I, I, I just was in a tizzy. I didn't know what, what to do. And <clears throat> so I went back every night. And I still couldn't figure nothing out. So they closed the revival on Sunday night, and I thought I was really put out. I, uh, I, 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 I didn't know. I hadn't talked to anybody, and, and I couldn't sleep, and all these things that a lot of things that I was involved with back way back just kept flashing before, you know, and. And uh, it it just haunted me to the point where uh, I was really miserable. But anyhow, they closed the revival, and I was laying on the couch on Monday, and the phone rang, and and uh, I think it was Nola. Uh, she told Sue said they're going to extend the revival. Well, I didn't realize that that was for me, but it it was, I guess. So. I went to church on Monday night, and uh, I, uh, I still was I still was in a tizzy. I didn't know I, di I didn't know what to do. But anyhow, the church closed. They, they shut. Church was over, and I started out. And when I walked down my seat into the aisle. It happened. And my load that I was carrying was gone. And well, from then on, I, I mean, I was I was really interested in church, and and, uh, and we we continued to go up there. And then they, I I don't know what it was, but there was. Uh, uh, 
something that I didn't understand. And then I had, I had never read the Bible before in my life. I didn't know the first verse, but I started reading during that time. And I realized that if, uh, if, you know, you, you, you had to believe in the virgin birth or you couldn't be saved. The superintendent, he, he came uh, out and said that, uh, you know, there was, it wasn't necessary to believe in the virgin birth. Well, I had read enough then that I thought, you know, if there's nothing to it, if you can't believe in the virgin birth. But anyhow, I was a little bit uneasy. I didn't talk to anybody. I didn't say anything about it. But after Wilbur had left, it left a big hole with me, you know. And I was a little bit un, uh, unsatisfied. And I was laying across the bed one Sunday afternoon after we'd come from church up there. And I thought, you know, I'm going to try some other churches. And I don't know why, but, and I had never talked to Howard Richards in my life. I didn't owe him anything or nothing, but. I felt like I needed to tell him. And you had lived in Rubyville all your yeah. life with him. Yeah, but he was a lot younger, you know. And I, I felt like I needed to talk to Howard about, about telling him that I wasn't mad, I was going to leave, you know. And so I drove up to Howard's, and he was coming from his dad's, coming under that big tree, that big old tree up there. And I met Howard there. And, and I told him, I said, I'd never talked to him in my life. I didn't know him other than just seeing him a little while, you know, passing the church. And, and I told him, I said, I, I'm not mad at nobody. I, I just feel like I need to look, look around. There's another, another church or something. And uh, I, I didn't realize that Howard felt the same way. That's what it's doing. You got the furnace on. Oh, on. Yeah. But. Okay. Just, no, just keep on. But anyhow, I talked to Howard and, and I told him, uh, we, we got to talking and we decided that, that instead of leaving, that we would uh, go to the school board and see if we could have Saturday night services and still go to church up here. So. Uh, so we went, we went to the school board and they agreed to, uh, uh, that we could have Saturday night service. So we went, contacted Frank Bowley and he was the first guy that ever, the first preacher that we ever had. And he preached on Saturday night. Well, when we had that service, it, it upset some people. So we seen that we was going to have to. To make a move but in the meantime we the first service that we ever had was in my garage it was Howard and his two girls Howard and Arlene and his two girls and me and Sue and Todd that was the first service that we ever had but we decided to uh, to uh, do that well after uh, after seeing that it upset a lot of people, we decided that we was going to do it during the week. So we went back to the school board, and uh, the Lord took care of everything because, uh, you know, he, uh, he had uh, he had Ron, Ron Ricky, and, uh, and Raymond sitting on the school board. Of course, if I do Bob East and Arch, they were good guys too. So the Lord had had it all fixed. Nowadays, you wouldn't be able to have one service, you know. So they they agreed that we could go ahead and have it three day, three services a week, and we did that for nine months. And we had, uh, you know, different preachers uh, come in. We had a guy. That we didn't. We really didn't know whether we was going to hook up with the denomination, whether we was going to have independent or what. We, it took us, we, we were just kind of in a tizzy. But in, in the process, we, we got a, 
Bob Blaine, he was superintendent of uh, that. Uh, I can't remember, remember the name of this, their denomination. But anyhow, he, he knew some preachers and stuff, and he started sending us preachers on Sunday morning. And, and on, on Wednesdays, we generally just, it was somebody in the, in the congregation that led the service, and, and uh, we tried to have a preacher on, especially Sunday morning. And he started sending preachers to us, and, and the, the, one of the first ones he sent was Charlie, Charlie Ragland. And Charlie came a lot after that. I mean, and he was uh, uh, Char Charlie Ragland, and, uh, and uh, uh, well, Bob Blaine, he preached for us, and, and, uh, and, and uh, Bill Snyder. We, we just had a lot of guys would just come for one service, you know, preach, and that's, that's what we did for nine months. During that time, I can insert that, you know, there were services we didn't have anybody to preach, right. and as a young person, I remember um, Dudley Morton was one of them, yeah. that he walked in and said the Lord sent him, and right. he preached, right. and that was just, as a young person, that was pretty cool to right. see the Lord, you knew the Lord sent him. Yeah, and another thing, we had such a great group but uh, you know I, I guess I have to tell this I didn't know what a fleece was but the, the first Wednesday night service we had I knew that Denise and uh, uh, the Flakers had to be there well I knew the Flakers was upset with us because she made it known to me that she was upset with us doing this and then the first service, um, she wa they walked in and said that uh, the Lord woke her up about two o'clock. And he said, "You got to go with her." And that, like I say, I didn't know what a fleece was, but uh, I think I do now after mm -hmm. after that. But things went on well, and we kept. You know, gained for for about nine months, and, and I told Howard, I said, uh, I said we're gonna have to we're gonna have to get out of here. I said we'll wear a wel welcome out after nine months, and uh, and I said, how about me going up and talking to Rollin and see see if we can't get uh, rent a part of that school building. Wrong. Which is the school where you went to elementary school. Right. Yeah. 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 And uh, so, and Rollin had bought that. It was condemned. And Rollin had bought it. And, and anyhow, he had a, a part of it rented. And uh, uh, I, uh, I, uh, I said, well, I'll, I'll go talk to him. Because Rollin, Rollin was my friend. I knew he'd do about anything for me. And, but at the time, they weren't going to church. And uh, so uh, I went up to, Ron was working the afternoon turn, and I was too. And <clears throat> I went up to ask him, I don't know, one or two o'clock, something like that. And Eileen came to the door. And of course, like I say, I grew up with them. They stood up with us. We was married and everything, and I, I said, "Is Rollin here?" And Eileen said, "No, he's not here. What do you want?" <laughs> but she, uh, so I said, "Well, I wanted to talk to him about uh, renting or leasing or something this building over there." And she says, "We're not interested." And uh, so anyhow, I, I left, and and it couple of days or so I was up by my barn and I heard I heard a car coming fast <laughs> <laughs> Rollin, you had to know Rollin and uh, Rollin came out he slid up through there and I was up on the bank and I thought uh oh and he came up to me and he pointed his finger right in my nose and he says you can buy it you can lease it, you can rent it. 
We turned around and got in the truck and took off. <clears throat> well, that left me in a spot. So I waited a couple of days till I got up enough nerve. And uh, I went up there one evening and he was working on a refrigerator there in the garage. And, and uh, <clears throat> so I, 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 I walked up there and I, t I told him it was almost dark. And I said, Ron, I come to talk to you about that building. He said, what do you want to talk about? <laughs> and and uh, I said, well, what we'd like to do something. What we need to get out up there. And he said, well, what do you want to talk? T tell me what you want to do. He said, I told, he said, I told you, you can lease it, rent it or whatever. And I said, we don't have any money. And he said, well, <clears throat> I, I don't know how the conversation went, but I said, what would you have to have for it? And he said, $30,000. And I said, well, we don't have any money. Uh, I said, would you split it? Would you keep the, he had four or five trailers up on the high part. Said, where our church sits now. Where the church sits now. And, and I said, would you split it? And he said, yeah, I'll, I'll split it. So he said, I'll, uh, I'll take 20000 and and then give you a five-year option for the uh, yeah. 10 and So anyhow, I, I went back and told the guys, and there was four or five of us that stood good. This, our church has never been in debt. They've never owned a, owed a penny. And there, uh, there was... Four or five of us, I can't remember this, who, who the names are, that we stood good for it. And, uh, that takes a lot of unity because in this yeah, day and age, yeah. for that many people to agree with their word right. is pretty yeah. huge. Right. It, anyhow, and so we started and we, uh, we started remodeling. We started getting some plans, which... I'd never dealt with the state before on anything like this, but anyhow, we had a guy over to Votech draw up some plans, and <clears throat> we sent them to the state, and they turned it down. And uh, uh, so uh, my friend that I worked with the mill, he, his neighbor was a building inspector, so I asked, uh, I asked Mike, I said, uh, how about... Uh, send that building inspector down there and see if he could help us a little bit. <laughs> so he did. He, he come down. And he said, boys, I'll tell you what. If I was you, I'd walk him, take him up there and walk him through. So we took him up and we walked him through. And they about beat us home. And uh, anyhow. Uh, that means they didn't approve him. They didn't approve him. <laughs> they didn't approve him. And. So I told Mike, I said, send that guy back out here again. I said, they sent, they, they uh, turned us down again. So he did. He sent him out there. And I, he laid them plans out on the hood of his car. And, and he said, that, well, they was all stamped and rejected, you know. He said, boys, I got, I got two years to go before I retire. He said, I ain't going to get fired over this. He said, I can't do nothing for you. He said, I don't know what. So there's issues that needed resolved. There's issues that needed resolved. So he started out and went clear to the end of the building, and he backed back up and he asked me, he said, do you know Vern Rife? And I said, yeah. He said, he's the only man that can get you in this building. Well, to me, that's a bit, that was big then, and it's still big. The only man. This is, this is what I say about key people key that we people. had that, that all it took all this these people in the right place. to get in the right place at the right time to do the job, and so I took took him down there and I told told Gene what what had happened and and he said let me have that thing he said I, he he was in his office down there every Monday morning and he said let me have him things and, and I'll I'll call you in a week or so or whatever. So it was a week or two, I don't know. He called me and told me to come down there on Monday. And uh, <clears throat> I went down there, and he had those uh, 
he, he handed me those plans, and the same plans that they had rejected twice, they okayed. And we went to work remodeling and, uh, and, and trying to and getting it in there. And we never had a building inspector, never had nobody show up until I called them whenever we started building the fellowship hall. That's the best. <laughs> how many years? I mean, that would have I, been. I can't remember how many years it was. But, well, but... the fellowship hall, I mean, I was one of the first um, things that have our shower in the fellowship yeah. hall, and that would have been in 82. So we're talking yeah. late 70s. Yeah, we we done all that remodeling and everything and, and went in there. And uh, there, there's just so many uh, uh, people along the way. That was uh, that God had placed, you know, just just like uh, uh, Arch and Bob and uh, uh, the school. And, well, and Herb played a part in that because well, Herb was the janitor the, the thing, for the school anyway. The thing, thing, when when we went over there and they agreed to let us uh, let us start our services in there. He, he said, you're going to have to get somebody to let you in there. So janitor or somebody in the system that's got a key. Well, Herb had let us in to play ball before, and, and we always give him $5 for letting us in. So we, me and Howard was coming across Big the hill. Big spenders. <laughs> me and Howard was coming across the hill from the, from the school board, and I told Howard, I said, Let's, let's, while we're at it, let's just stop up there and see if we can get Herb to do that for us. So we pulled it up to Herb and, and we told him what we had done, where we, where we were, and it was going to start. And we needed somebody with a key to get in there. And he said, Herb said, I think we'll just go with you boys. He was the first one that ever committed. And there was a lot of people that they weren't really committed because they didn't know uh, they didn't they weren't sure where how things was going to go you know yeah. and I had only been definitely saved. by faith and I I'd only been saved just a few, you know, I don't know what six or eight months or a year or something and I was you know we was just fumbling around really but the Lord blessed us uh, this seemed like on everything that we we touched it. We we went. Up, we didn't even have a songbook when we started, mm -hmm. and uh, I think Esther had some old songbooks up there in the uh, in her shed out back that uh, the church had uh, discarded. And that's what we had to start with. We didn't have we didn't have anything. But anyhow, it it, it went from from there to. The, the Lord just blessed, and we we had uh, after we got it, we was only in one one uh, side there to start with, and then we knocked the other side out and enlarged the sanctuary, and and then uh, uh, we had another remodeling where we uh, well I, I can tell you we we had. Eighty-eight thousand dollars in the kitty to build it, and when we got done, we still had the eighty-eight thousand dollars. And then, you know, it went from that to the and and Jerry Pierron, he was our architect, and he he was so, so good all those years in the old church and the new church both, and he wouldn't charge. He would say, uh, "I'd say how much I owe you, Jerry." He'd say, "Ah." If you guys get a little extra, you can send me some. If you don't, you said that'll be all right. How many people is going to get an architect to do? You know, uh, like I say, there there are so so many people that that deserves. Uh, you know, like Frank Pastors, I he was a building inspector. He became a good friend of mine, and I he knew that we we wanted to do the right thing. And we did the right thing. We had no problems with him all the way through, even even down as far as the uh, uh, outreach. Frank 
he played a big part in coming to New Boston, the outreach yeah, coming to New yeah, Boston. When we built the outreach, you know, he was, but he was he was so good to help me all the way through. And then when we was building the building up here, Dorsey Adkins, he he done played a big part. In, and he wasn't saved when he started. No, no, no. he he got saved uh, during right. Well, I, right before we moved in there, mm -hmm. and and then he, you know, passed away pretty quick. But uh, uh, and, and and this, like I say, Rollin, Rollin. Uh, How did it progress? To, then he gave you the option to buy the. Uh, part where well, the church okay. sits, yeah, yeah. And yeah. how did that I, progress with Rollin? I, <laughs> we, we we was in the we was in there. I I don't know. It wasn't that many many months. Don Williams was there, and and the church had done real good, and we had enough money to buy the the the, the top part where the trailers were, and I knew Rollin. Uh, Rollin didn't want to sell that building. He didn't want it. He, but he had to. Mm -hmm. so, he wasn't a Christian even, but that's how the Lord he, can move on he people. Had to. He mm -hmm. had to move on. And I kind of felt sorry for him because uh, I knew he didn't want to sell it. And I'll never forget it. We got that money together. In about a year or so, I don't know just how. For the first part. But no, no, no. We we paid that off, and then we had quicker uh, than a year. Yes, and then then we had uh, uh, we had uh, enough, enough money money to to buy the other. Where you had five years, told, but I, it took I, a year. I told Rollin, I said, uh, I, I I told I told Rollin, I said. Uh, they're told Howard. I said, let's go over. But any, anyhow, uh, I, I told Howard, I said, let's, let's go over and take and, and pay Ron for that, uh, that uh, upper part. And I kind of dreaded it because I didn't want to know, and I knew Ron pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, I know him all. Practically all my life, you know, and I knew I, Rollin was Rollin, and <laughs> and I, me and Howard knocked on the door and we walked in there after church, and, and Rollin was sitting there on the couch, and he said, uh, and "I said, Rollin, we come over here to uh, pay you for that uh, upper part," and I said, "He he didn't like that very well," <laughs> but I said. I knew him well enough that I listened to him. I knew that he'd wind down a little <laughs> bit. And he said, I'm a man of my word. <laughs> and he said, let's do it. So that was that. But then later on, they come back to church, and Ron and Eileen did, when when Don, Don Williams was there. And, he, and the unique thing about that is they walked down the aisle yeah. during the offering and got saved. Yeah, yeah, I can't remember how that was. But anyhow, there's a lot of things and a lot of people that, you know, you leave out. But I, I, I can sit around and think of so many people that... But as a collective like, group, I can remember, you know, when it came time to remodel, you know, our several men spent oh, yeah. every weekend, every oh, evening, yeah, yeah. and yeah. it took that group of men to oh, stay yeah. with unity to get every right. phase of we our church done. Right. It was all volunteer work. Yeah. We didn't hire a lot of things out. Yeah. And we, uh, when we started the new church, I mean, you know, there was times. That, uh, and you oversaw that, that building project too. So, and I know talking to you through different times, you would say, well, we're probably going to have to get to here and then stop. Yeah. And how did that, how did that work? Well, I think, what helped more than anything, we had we had seven hundred thousand dollars to start with. That's what we start with. We had the contract on, and that's a group of people 
that are just middle class yeah. mm -hmm. people. We don't have yeah. a lot of wealthy people in our congregation. That I think the, where the Lord blessed us, really blessed us, was uh, I, the the Methodist church up here, they were going to, they were going to take that and sell it out from under them. But I knew a couple of guys that was going to bid on it. And they talked about putting motorcycle shops and everything. And every time I'd drive by, I couldn't hardly get by that place thinking about it. And I knew this one guy was going to bid on it. And I one day it got to burden me so bad. I, I, I went up to Howard and I said, Howard, we can't let that happen. And I said, we, we, we got to, we got to help them people. So, so we we drove up to uh, Miles. So we asked Miles. And Miles said, "No, we we don't have the money. But we're going to sell it, or you know, let it go, let it go." And so I went to the board and I told him, "I said, man, we can't uh, we can't let this we can't let this happen." So we had that seven hundred thousand dollars to start to, our building to start the building. And, and so they told me, said, well, go, go buy it. We'll buy it, you know, for the, for the congregation. So you go bid on it. So I went and I. There's a whole group of people there. Yeah. I, re I was there. So and, I remember and, that. And, 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 but anyhow, they said, I said, well, how, how much can I bid? I, I said, I don't have any idea what you want to make. I said, you, you got to give me. Well, anyhow, it, went, it was shuffled around in the board meeting for a little while, and finally they said, sky's the limit, whatever, whatever it buy takes, it. buy it. So that's what we did. We, we bought it, and the Lord blessed us to, you know. But I, I'll never forget Cal Ray. I knew that, uh, well, I don't know how I knew it, but... Uh, I knew the money was kind of tied to cow. And whenever they asked me to run the work on it, I, I knew that cow had to be, stay there. And I didn't know, I knew there was people wanting him, just like Columbus, and that there was people after him to get him to come. So I went to him and I said, hey, uh, I want to ask you something before I get into this. Are you in for the long haul? And he said, yeah. So I, I let him simmer for a week or so. I wanted to hear him say that again. <laughs> so I went back and I said, hey, I've got to ask you, are you in for the long haul? He said, I'm in for the long haul. So we did, and we would get down to, just about where we were going to have to quit. And you didn't want to tell the congregation, you know. Discourage just people. Keep it perfect. And I can't mention names here, but just to show you how the Lord works, I had, I had done some figures and we was getting into the pews and the, the sound, which was big money. So we was getting up close to where it was at. And... Uh, uh, you know, I knew what was, we didn't have that. We didn't have that money. To and uh, anyhow, there was a uh, there was a guy come to my house one night. He said. Uh, <clears throat> I want to see that church finished. Okay, I said, Are you guys, you got the money? I said, no. I said, we, we, so far we've kept going, but I said, we, we're into some big stuff here at the, right at the end. It was, you know, and he said, uh, how much you think it'll take? And I said, well, uh, Best I can figure, roughly, it's going to take about seven hundred fifty thousand dollars because we're into the big stuff. And he said, "I want to see it finished." He said, "I'll, I'll back you." He said, "You, the church can pay me when they can." And I said to him, "I said, hey, does Mama know what you're doing?" And 
he he said, yeah. I said, I got to hear. I said, so me and him went to his home. And, and she agreed to. So uh, we, we got, I can't remember what it was, about 100,000 or something like that. Right. Then, and the offering, real quickly. Yeah, and and uh, uh, no, we got that much from him. Okay. And and we were we were we were going, but the money started coming in and started coming in, and we didn't have to get no more money from him. And when we got done, we had enough money to pay what we had got from him. So. Uh, and so many times. Since there, there, we've been there, in our building, I know it's been said that, you know, we give very generously to missionaries, yeah. to our out, yeah. uh, extended outreach ministries. And Todd, being the treasurer, he will say he pays it all and the amount's still the same. Right. right. Yeah. It's, it's been, it's been, uh, I never, ever dreamed that I never You know, Cal always says to um, our congregation that our church takes care of anybody that we bring in to preach or sing. And he said, but that doesn't release you as individuals. Right. And so many times in our services, people just freely get up right. and go put money in an offering plate for whoever's there. So our church is a very giving yeah. group of people, yeah. and that makes a huge difference. Yeah. And they go above and beyond in that. I think that is speaks one of the reasons the Lord blesses us so much. Right. Well, is there any in wrapping up? Is there anybody else that you can think of, or well, anything I, I know, else? I know that we missed a, a lot. It's hard to put all of that into one thing. There's they're just these guys that I I I, I know that uh, just like Herb Church, if Herb he took the old the old lumber and stuff out of that church and, and reused it, sawed it, and, 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 and uh, Church went set, to the, he worked, worked every day. Every day. There. At our church, and yeah. he never was paid for working there, was he? Yes. Okay, good. Well, yeah, we, we finally talked him into taking $2 an hour, <laughs> and then later. Wonder who would work for $2 an hour today. <laughs> well, he, he wanted to work, but we tried to just, you know, whatever, gas money or whatever. But Herb, uh, me and Herb got so close, and I thought the world of him. Yeah, I mean, what a the, man. Uh, when we were start, when we were building, you know, when we first started, we didn't have any money, and he would work all week, and then I I would, uh, we, we'd gather up a little bit of money, and I'd take my pickup and go on Saturday, and I'd go to low or Purdy's and, and get uh you two before your sheetrock or whatever you think for the next week you know that's the way we operated and uh, he was such a mild meek man yeah he was yeah. a precious precious yeah. man yeah he was and he was very instrumental in oh, keeping yeah. our church going yeah. and making things work that didn't always work but i know in in the, in the beginning when we first started <laughs> that it it shook uh, the the community was Tommy down on me and Howard there for uh, quite a while, and uh, I know that it caused a lot of confusion in the community when we left there. But but uh, a lot of healing has uh, taken place. Oh yeah, yeah. And it's a we're a close knit community, right? And yeah. I, the healing that needed to take place, I think, has taken yeah. place. But like I say, I was green and I didn't realize I didn't. I, uh, I just uh, 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 tried to do as, as the Lord led, and I did, sometimes I didn't know what that was. <laughs> right. Really, because really, I would there there would be things happen that kept me going that I knew that it had to be the Lord, or it wouldn't happen. Well, it's like Cal says, you know when. If you pray every day and you go to church all the time and you read your Bible, the Lord's not going to steer you wrong. Right. He's going to steer you right. And if you take time to listen, 
he's going to keep guiding and directing as, yeah. as he has in our church. So I appreciate you coming and, and sharing this part of it. And well, hopefully I, we've I, given a lot of credit I to people that took time to make things happen for us. I know that we haven't mentioned uh, uh, a lot of people that, that took a part in it, but I mean, uh, it was me and Howard and our families, it was our life for day and night mm -hmm. for quite a while. Yeah. I, mean, uh, I can remember Howard's girls saying that they missed their dad. Yeah. And it was because yeah, you all, we, it was just, we it were, was your it, life. It was, it was every. It was every day, every night. We let everything go. I didn't even raise a garden for a couple of years there. Uh, That's saying something. Because, <laughs> because I, uh, you know, we just didn't have time. And it was, it was a day and night thing. And poor Wilbur, he was so such a help. And Wilbur, so many times. Wilbur was, I still say Wilbur was the man, but we. I don't, he had three or four kids and, and he had a living to make and he couldn't see us. See how it was going to go. He couldn't see. But he was our pastor three different times, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. twice, yeah. Up, twice up there. Mm -hmm. And and he would call, I know he'd call me and he'd call me up at night. He'd say, how about running up? I actually... I remember one night I called Howard. I don't know about midnight. And he said, I, "I said Wilbur wants us to come up." <laughs> and we had to work. We had to work day turn the next day. We drove all the way to Iceland just to hear him. But he was such a great guy. And he, he Wilbur, played a, a big part in in that. And uh, he uh, Wilbur was the pastor when I got saved. Yeah. Well, we had we had a lot of this like Don Williams. Don Williams was a big. He filled a hole. And Reverend Snyder. Reverend huge, Snyder. Huge. Reverend Snyder. And, Probably one of the wisest men I ever knew was Reverend Snyder. Yeah, and uh, and you had we had some that didn't work out very well, but we had some that. Uh, that's, but that's but they couldn't. The, the the big thing was. To see, we had all these different. We had Baptist, Pentecostal, Christian Union, Nazarene. Christian Baptist, Nazarene, and these guys were all denominational. And when they they would say, we'd try to explain to them, "Look, we got all kinds of people here. We can't offend any of them." Well, that was all right. But when they got there, then it was a different. They wanted to swing it their way, and and we. We didn't want to go that way. A, a independent church back then was on. They, they said it, it can't work. Mm -hmm. it, it won't work. They kept telling us. Well, it's not funded. It's How's not, the money going to yeah, come in? It, it, how are you going to get your preachers? Right. And, Who's going to tell you leadership? How to handle leadership? They. It, it was all ingrained. So therefore, right. they couldn't see out of that box. Yeah. But. Uh, well, I think that. Just by hearing that, we can see from a teenager it was. Well, our youth, our youth played such a big part. I mean, we had some strong Always. root youth. We had about I don't know about a dozen of them, but they they played a big part in our church. Big, big part. And they still do today. Oh huge. yeah, yeah. The youth was always so. huge part. But, but I can say. And we'll close with this, and we always want to close with Whitney's byline, but I think it fits our church, and that is when your strength comes from the right source, there's not a mountain you can't climb.